Dr. Rich, thank you so much for joining me for this Q&A to talk about COVID testing. So we're in the fall now. What can we expect for this upcoming winter? We can expect a, a lot of overlap between flu and COVID symptoms, and somehow we have to discern which is which, along with change of season, which comes uh, typical seasonal allergies and allergic rhinitis. So many of the flu and COVID symptoms are similar and overlap. So I see us doing a lot of testing for both flu and COVID to see if people have one, the other, or both, and try to discern that out from just seasonal allergies. Dr. Rich, with a population that has a high-risk behavior like a university, what kind of testing frequency makes sense? Great question. I think um, we should probably use the same thing that we're doing for businesses that cannot practice social distancing. We're doing, uh, in, in our area, we're doing surveillance testing for local businesses on an every two-week basis on average. And to keep that um, population uh, free of COVID, we have to remember that um, 40% or so, give or take a few percentage points, can be asymptomatic. So that person or college student may not know they even have the illness and are spreading it around. So I think surveillance testing is the key on average every two weeks uh, to keep those asymptomatic students out of the general population. And Dr. Rich, do you think tests that provide fast results are a trade-off in the sense of you know, losing some sensitivity with the speed of getting the results? Absolutely. Um, we all know that, um, for example, the uh, Abbott ID Now machine, uh, which we all use and I use myself in my urgent care, um, is greater than 94.7% sensitive or in lay terms accurate uh, compared to a, a lab test that's a PCR test, it's about 98% accurate. The trade-off is not waiting um, five, six, seven days, sometimes up to 10 days for those results. And when you have to wait that long, you could either be back at work or back at school uh, in, the, in that general population, spreading the disease if you have it, or on home quarantine and losing school and losing uh, work hours. I, I think waiting the 15 minutes for a rapid test far outweighs uh, waiting five to seven, sometimes 10 days um, for a PCR test. It only gives you a few more percentage points of sensitivity. This way we can get that student or that worker back uh, to where they need to be, whether it's in class on campus or back to work and, and sacrifice those few percentage points. By far, I think that a rapid test outweighs that lab send out PCR test. Dr. Rich, the new Abbott Binax Now or Binax When test, because we don't know when we're gonna get it, is, is starting to be released. What are your thoughts about it? The, the test was basically introduced to do mass testing. Um, according to Abbott, it wasn't introduced to uh, be a moneymaker so much as it was to do mass testing for the populations in rapid, rapid fire format where you can test hundreds of people in, a, in over an hour period. However, the ID Now machine, uh, the molecular test that tests nucleic acid, is most likely more sensitive uh, to picking up the virus. Uh, than the antigen test. So I think as of right now, the rapid test picking up nucleic acid is probably the more accurate and more sensitive test. So recently I met with some Abbott executives uh, who think that the Abbott ID Now machine is more sensitive than the Binax. So moving forward, um, the Binax was created to pick up um, antigen and it's most sensitive when someone has symptoms for about four days. However, you have asymptomatic patients, and so you don't know when they contracted the virus. So that's where the ID Now machine testing for nucleic acid uh, is a much better test. Wow, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, so because with the university population, then you're going to want to use something like the Abbott ID Now or PCR send out test to be able to identify those asymptomatic individuals. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And you mean that because the viral load is is much more in a or much less in an asymptomatic case? That's what we believe, uh, because, uh, you know, the higher viral load, 
um, people get symptomatic quicker and they get more symptoms and they get uh, more severity of disease. So there's many patients that I see uh, in my urgent care, which we have about a 10% uh, positive rate of testing, that many people continue to test positive. However, when we do antibody tests on those patients, they have no antibodies in their system. And many of these patients have minimal to no symptoms at all, not enough to even produce antibodies. Dr. Rich, thank you so much for doing this Q&A with me. I really appreciate it and I appreciate your time. Thomas, thanks for having me and I look forward to the next meeting.